Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by Market5. I'm your co-host, Joel Alcon, and along with Brianna Velasky, and we had David Tal on the line. He's the co-founder of Maglin Capital. Good morning, David. Good morning, Joel. Thanks for joining us here. I'm glad to see we got a, another U of M grad here on the show, a grad of the law school. Uh, first question, and we've been trying to put the, the you know this Heinz deal, Heinz Craft deal together, and uh, hard to understand. Great for crash show, shareholders. Unbelievable trading action. Could you just you know from your perspective, can you make a few comments on that deal? Uh, certainly. Uh, obviously, you're dealing with very sophisticated and successful acquirers. Uh, who have been in this sector for some time now and have been successful in the sector for some time now. Um, their plan to success has been, on a general basis, about cost-cutting uh, from these behemoth uh, food companies. I think that they'll go ahead and execute the same plan here as well, uh, and that's where they see the upside in all this. Um, on the flip side, in terms of the risk in the industry, and it's not, I'm not particularly an expert in the industry, but you know, consumer tastes and eating habits have changed radically over the past, I'd say, few years even, um, and I think that there's no turning around on that. Uh, a lot of healthier foods, um, you know, m much more exotic uh, in terms of tastes generally, and so therefore that presents a problem generally for the business because these businesses are very, uh, I would say, old school. A lot of these brands uh, have been around for a very long time um, and are not necessarily quick adapters to the tastes that are changing uh, currently. Okay. All right. Uh, staying on the merger and acquisition, uh, a lot of times when you see something going on in the sector, it uh, it initiates other you know possible takeovers. A lot of companies in this sector, perhaps in the food sector or in other sectors, are there any merger and acquisition possibilities out there you'd like to discuss? Uh, nothing in particular, you know, on our radar screen. Uh, this has been, you know, the biggest deal of the year uh, that's been announced, and uh, you know, based on the pace, um, it seems like it could be the biggest for a while. Um, at the other end of the spectrum is obviously there's a lot of private equity dry powder out there. Um, interest rates continue to be low, uh, and so therefore, you know, activity should be higher on the basis of that. Uh, but there's nothing in particular that's on. You know, on our radar screens that has been speculated about, um, we haven't heard a lot of, you know, PE talk lately about, you know, lots of large companies uh, being within the zone uh, of, of being targets. Okay, you mentioned interest rates. Uh, quick comment on the Fed decision from last week and uh, your, your outlook for 2015 as far as interest rates. Uh, I'll probably sound like the majority of folks that are out there, which is interest rates will rise towards the end of this year, uh, and they will climb slowly. The question is, more importantly, um, you know, how is the market going to go ahead and react to that? Uh, whether have have we already all priced that all in, um, or uh, you know, do we think that um, uh, there's going to be some whiplash? Uh, volatility that's going to happen uh, when, in fact, the Fed does what people are expecting them to do. Uh, look, by the way, let, Joel, can I double back to your question on uh, on M and A activity? Um, of course. You know, one one of the sectors that we've seen a lot of activity in of late, uh, but it hasn't been primarily domestic, um, has been uh, entertainment. Uh, there's been a lot of activity coming from Asia. Um, in terms of their interest in Hollywood and in content, we've seen a bunch of financing deals that have been done recently. So the likes of Lionsgate Films has gotten a good infusion um, of capital for production of films going forward. Uh, Legendary Studios has done the same. Um, and, uh, you know, the appetite from Asia from some of the conglomerates is voracious. Uh, there's been talk about it in the press. Uh, they've been very explicit about it. Companies like the Wanda Group, companies like Fosun, Alibaba, SoftBank, and so forth that all have an extremely large capacity to take assets down. Um, and we're now waiting, um, frankly, for an acquisition to occur. At the very least, Wanda, um, their chairman has said, you know, they want full control of an entertainment and media asset. They're looking at the United States. They're looking at Hollywood. Um, and this is a good segue into our portfolio. You know, we've been involved, I think, as you know, and, you know, generally the public knows, we've been involved for a long time now uh, in MGM Studios, um, Pure Play Studio, standalone basis, not publicly listed. Nevertheless, their equity trades pretty 
uh, liquid uh, on most broker dealer desks uh, around the city. And uh, we think that they are clearly an acquisition target, very much undervalued in comparison to their peers. Uh, and so therefore, you know, there may be a great, uh, a great opportunity for acquisition sometime this year. Okay, MGM Resorts. Yeah, I got the... Uh, got the- no, not MGM Resorts. This is MGM Studios, very different from the casino okay, okay. and okay. lodging company. This is just... James Bond, The Hobbit, you know, just movies okay. and TV. Okay, all right, separate from the uh, resorts. Uh, looking at distress situations, Puerto Rico, Argentina, yeah, stepping into any of that debt over there, is it, you know, looking uh, looking attractive at these prices and, you know, relative to, you know, what you can get uh, on interest rates here? Um, look, we've actually looked pretty carefully um, at both those situations. We were involved in Puerto Rico for a while. We think the easy money has been made. We think that the restructuring is going to be difficult down there. Uh, it really hasn't come to a head yet. Um, and there are a lot of moving parts, not only on the on the you know general Commonwealth side, but obviously there are the public corporations out there like the, electro- the Electric and Power Authority and Transportation Authority and so forth. Um, and in terms of Argentina, um, you know, there has been a lot of interest there uh, simply because they've been in a technical default for some time. But that said, you know, the country really is poised to make a breakout, especially when they get a new leader in place and their elections are expected to happen later this year. We haven't been particularly focused on the sovereign debt there because we found better opportunities uh, in equities of companies down there. Um, in particular, we've been involved pretty heavily and have been activists in a company called Madalena Energy, which is ticker symbol MVN on the Toronto Stock Exchange or trades in the U.S. that is MDLNF, Madalena Energy, listed in Canada, but all operating assets for all intents and purposes down in Argentina. They produce oil down there, and the Argentinian government guarantees the price of oil at $76 a barrel. So come hell or high water on WTI and Brent, these guys continue to produce oil down in Argentina and sell it for $76 a barrel, which is a spectacular <laughs> backstop. Sign me up for that. Uh, I, I noticed um, that you, you had a pretty good uh, February, and your fund was up nearly 20%. And uh, That's as- better than pretty good, Joel. Come on, that's like <laughs> shooting the lights out. 20% in a month, rocks house, and in March we've been up thus far more than 5%. Okay, all right. You've had a spectacular February, being up twenty percent, and uh, you, there you go. Okay, and then you're yeah. up five percent at least in March. What? Uh, how was your January? Oh, we're down. This is a tough January. <laughs> fair amount of you know volatility. Right. Uh, okay. We're net. We're net. We were down about nine in January. So net for the year right now, we're up. More than 15%. Beautiful. You can't argue with that. So just, you know, without having to reveal your individual, you know, securities and stuff or what you've been involved in, what's been working for you? Um, Okay, so February big mover was Fairpoint Communications, uh, ticker symbol FRP, uh, telecommunications company, fifth largest in the United States. They reached a labor deal that we've been waiting for for some time. Uh, the company is now poised to go ahead and continue on their operational excellence. This is a company we've been involved in for about four years. Um, our cost basis on the stock is around seven bucks a share. Stock is now at seventeen fifty. We will hold this um, until thirty to thirty five. Uh, the company is really the most likely acquisition target um, in all of telecom right now, in all of fixed wireline telecom. Um, and now having cleaned up their labor issues, uh, they are really uh, an opportune candidate uh, for some of the larger telecom players who want to grow by acquisition. And the company is currently valued at roughly, you know, five and change times EBITDA, and comps in the space are valued between six and six and a half times. Okay, so that that's one that's been working for That was a driver, a driver in February. A driver in March thus far has been Global Star. Um, I think you know the name. It's been a pretty, you know, big battleground situation. Yeah, yeah, with lawsuits short. and everything. Right, I'm. I'm sorry. What they, they had a big lawsuit, right? As far as was this the one that was uh, picking up the signals from some of the big broadcasters? No, 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 no. Global Star is they, they own uh, some very valuable spectrum uh, that they are looking to use for Wi-Fi communication. What's the symbol? Um, and they have it. Uh, that petition has been in front of the FCC. 
Uh, they've done some testing of late that has gone very well. Uh, and now the expectation is, is that the FCC will go ahead and grant them the permission that they're looking for. The stock's up 30% this month. Um, and, Simple. you know, Can currently you trades at $3.40 or so. Uh, we think the stock is worth, you know, between 8 and $10 a share. The company's global star, the ticker is GSAT, GSAT. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't get that one. Okay, that's a nice-looking chart on that. And I'm sorry, where's your target on that? Uh, somewhere between 8 and 10. Okay, all right. So you're holding on to that one. Uh, anything that's been a little, you know, kind of getting you, holding you back from better gains that you're, you're looking for a turnaround in? Yeah, um, an interesting situation is SFX Entertainment, ticker SFXE. So this is a company that's in the electronic dance music space. They put on what used to be known as raves, but they're multi-day festivals. Um, the company, you know, it, has, they, it was a busted IPO. It came out at 13, traded all the way down. Uh, the shorts have had their way on this stock. Uh, the company's stock currently trades at $4.30, but the CEO of the company recently offered $4.75 a share. Okay. Uh, CEO and founder and controlling shareholder, for that matter, um, has gone ahead and hired financial advisors uh, just recently uh, to go ahead and help with that. Uh, we love the business. We actually think that there is a lot of uh, promise to the business. It's the highest growth segment in the music industry right now. Uh, these guys own the space. They're the only. They're the largest player in production of these festivals around the world. Uh, they are signing up very large sponsors like T-Mobile, um, AB InBev, Mastercard, Clear Channel to go ahead and sponsor events. So that's you know major boost to EBITDA. And, you know, the company is still growing, so, you know, it's very hard for them to, to, you know, go ahead and say, we've proven concept. Right. I think they're still in the process of doing that, but the, the company is really undervalued. And right now, it's just, it's caught between a bunch of short interest on the one hand, the management of the company, or the CEO making a buyout offer for the company. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we obviously think that that bid by the CEO is a, is a low ball bid. Um, the company really is worth much more, you know, definitely somewhere around $8 or so a share. Um, and so, you know, we're going to go ahead and see how this unfolds, how the bid unfolds, see if there are other bidders that come in. They've appointed a special committee, committee from the board to go ahead and evaluate not only the offer that was made by the CEO, but also to go out and check out what other offers there are, um, you know, from potential industry players, probably folks like MSG. Uh, and so forth. I'm sorry, I missed the symbol on that one. Oh, that's okay. S F X E. Sam Frank X Ray Edward. Okay, just pulling that up for our traders at home here. Kind of hugging that uh, that level where the CEO came in at four and a quarter. Uh, David, before we let you go, uh, market rough couple days. Uh, had a triple witch expiration, unwound to the downside here. Big sell off for the last couple days. Kind of near the bottom of the trading range. Are we still trading range brown, bound market, or the buy the dipper is going to come in take us back up to all time highs? Uh, I think we'll go back up. I think we're still in pretty good mode. Lots of capital coming in from overseas uh, because this is the greatest place to invest and to live. Um, and so, therefore, we will go higher. The valuations are ridiculously high, and uh, capital needs to be put to work, and you know, good companies deserve that capital. So I think we go higher from here. When we see dips like you know we've seen, when there's major volatility, we just go ahead and buy more. Okay, good. David Tal, he is co-founder of the Maglin Capital Group. He joins us here on Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, talking about stuff that we need a little bit more of education on, distressed securities and high-yield debt. So thanks a lot, David. Great interview. Hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks, Joel. Take care.